welcome to the complete guide to Battle of Umbara on Clone Wars Adventures. All sections of the guide are placed in the description below. Keep in mind this is a two-part guide, so you may not find the section you are looking for here. All information has been proven and checked in this guide. Battle of Umbara contains a total of five mission instances, with no completion order, but it's best to do the mission in the order this guide has organized them. The first you will likely encounter is the Umbaran Airfield mission. This one is pretty easy to get to. Leaving the Republic outpost, you'll probably want to follow the road. Moving down it, a sky-high beam should catch your attention. The source of the beam is Fives, who you can talk to to give you the Umbaran Airfield mission. Sir, the situation here is not good. The Umbarans have a strong foothold here, and there are multiple heavy cannons on the far side of the airfield, throwing up heavy fire at our fleet in orbit around the planet. A large-scale attack will not do well here, but you might be successful if you infiltrate the airfield through this small entry we've secured. Get in there, take out as many of those shadow people as you can, and destroy those mobile heavy cannons. Think you can handle this one? Every mission instance has a single and multiplayer mode. Choosing either does not affect the difficulty of the mission. However, in multiplayer mode, your team shares the three lives you are given. Each mission also has three challenges. Look for the collections guide later in this guide for more info. Starting this mission, you'll be prompted to take either corridor. In single player, just travel down one corridor. The amount of enemies and the time saved from going down one corridor will add to a better score in the end. The unique phase of this mission is a section where you will need to jump into an Umbaran tank and move through the Umbaran airfield. Inside the airfield, your tank deals 3,000 damage per hit on other enemies. Enemy tanks can go down with one shot, but they also deal 500 damage. Randomly, 499 health is given to you in order a couple of seconds in the airfield. You will need to destroy four cannons to complete the mission. Each cannon has 15,000 HP which equals five tank shots. Your secondary ability is a heal up, which can be used from any point in the tank. The repair ability adds 1,000 health back to you each second over eight seconds. After the repair has finished, the ability will cool down after eight seconds. Keep in mind the heal up takes no force power and can be infinitely used. After defeating the four tanks, you are free to exit the mission. Your score is summed up of four totals. Lives remaining, enemies defeated, time completed, and speedy completion bonus. Here's a map for this mission. There are three different bunkers scattered in No Man's Land. Bunkers Usk, Grek, and Krill in that order of difficulty. All bunkers are characterized by having twice as many rooms as the airfield, but having similar maps. Bunker Krill has not only Umbarns and Droids, but also Trandoshans, and is the longest of the three bunkers. When it comes to bunkers, you'll want to remember a few key things. First, there are loads of mobs, yes, but this does not require the use of a heavy AoE weapon, such as the launcher. Rifles and melee weapons are the best for the simple enemies inside of bunkers. Another thing you'll want to remember is the behind the corner trick. If you maintain a good distance from enemies while hiding behind a corner wall, you'll be able to damage enemies without them being able to damage you. This is a good strategy when your health gets too low. Another point to add, destroy a nearby explosive container, first of all, and enemies in a room. It'll save you work and always reward you with free tank credits right away. Each bunker ends in a boss fight. They should be easy enough to solo, so see our boss guide later in this guide. Additionally, there is a bunker collection to defeat all three bunkers to earn a piece of unbarn furniture. Here is the map for each of the three missions.
The Sith Academy is the biggest, longest, and hardest of the five mission instances. Unlocking the mission only requires to collect a whole Sith holocron. To do so, just defeat eight Sith in the Sith Academy area. The Sith Academy mission has three main sections. The Training Droid Encounter, the Varad Zag Encounter, and the Darth Maul Encounter. The only enemies in this mission next to the bosses are Dark Acolytes. In every case, you'll want to defeat the Dark Acolyte Healer first in a group. If you go straight for the Warriors, you might as well be punching a brick wall, as the Warriors will continue to be healed. Because of the high amount of HP and grouping you find in the Sith Inn, you'll want to carry a launcher weapon for the majority of the mission. If your health gets too low in the middle of a fight, which it likely will, just kite or run and gun enemy mobs until they reset from their location, and let your health regenerate. Watch out for a mob of Dark Acolyte Elites at an entryway in the first pathway of the instance. Dark Acolytes are also significantly tougher and killing the healer first is no question. Dark Acolyte Elites are also found in side rooms in the instance. Dark Acolytes have two attacks, a melee attack and a ranged lightning attack. If you're using a ranged weapon, then please keep your range. Their lightning attack deals half as much damage as their melee. This mission also has an element other missions do not have, Lava. Lava is capable of dealing 200 to 300 damage to you every half second, so by all means, try to stay out of it. After two boss battles, you'll be able to face the final boss battle against Darth Maul. Completing the mission without losing a life earns you the unyielding player title. Completing this instance six times will reward you Darth Maul's lightsaber. Here's a map of the instance. Battle of Umbar is filled with boss fights within missions, the open world environment, and wherever they are, we have organized this part of the guide to give you the best strategy possible for each boss. Let's start with General Farnus, found in Bunker Usk. Farnus deals 200 damage every hit he deals. In the Farnus boss battle, you'll find yourself in a room of explosive containers. You'll want to use this to your advantage. If you kite Farnus from across the room, he will fall up. Now to use the explosive containers. Simply shoot one of the containers near Farnus. An explosive container will deal 450 damage when you are near it, but it deals even more damage to Farnus. Keep pulling Farnus across the room to make the boss fight go a lot quicker with the use of containers. The containers also have another purpose. Running low on force or health? Destroy containers around the room to take the power up that hides inside them. While the containers do respawn, the power ups do not so do not waste them when the opportunity comes. Next in the boss fights is General Ignatius from Bunker Grip. This boss battle is slightly different from Farnus. Instead of containers to damage Ignatius, there are now containers to damage you. Ignatius also deals 200 damage from each hit. At every time Ignatius loses 25% health, he'll run to a different corner of the room. You just have to be careful when you're not here and when he blows up a container. Other than that, it's a fairly easy boss. The next boss is in Punker Krill. Commander Krusk and his assistants. This is a three-man boss fight. fight. The other two bosses are Medic, Skrist, and Gunner Rash. Skrist is obviously a healer and Rash a DPS. You want to kill the medic first, as he's the one healing Rash and Met Krusk. Skrist will mostly try to heal the other two, but he sh his shots do deliver a minor 100 damage. After Skrist goes down, you'll want to head for Rash. Gunner Rash deals 200 damage every second, making him a dangerous enemy to leave standing. Finally, you'll want to assault Krusk. Krusk's attacks deal 200 damage, but they do not fire as often as Rash does. This is a pretty easy boss fight once you got the order down. This boss fight does not take place inside an instance for a change. This boss is Captain Deeb and his assistants. Captain Deeb can be found in the heart of the Trandoshan settlement. Deeb himself deals 200 damage every 2 seconds. The trouble in this fight is Grask and Sark. Grask has a DPS as he deals 300 damage every second. 
Sark is a healer, but also deals 133 damage every two seconds when not healing. However, the trick of this boss fight is that all three bosses reduce your critical damage and hit chance. Like with the Commander Cross boss fight, you'll want to go for the healer, aka Sark, first. Sark can cast a healing spell that continues even after his death. The healing spell adds for 5% of Deep's health back every second over 5 seconds. Next, of course, is Grass. Then, Deep. Defeating Deep rewards 250 credits to any player who contributes to defeating him. After 2 minutes, all 3 Trandoshan bosses will respawn. The concept of healer, DPS, and boss is easy to understand, but the strategy can be overlooked when you have a majority of people to help. Now, in this fight, there's the known behind the pipework trick. This trick just means simply hiding behind the large pipework seen here and damaging Deep. If you manage to aggro Deep as he spawns, he will not be able to attack you, yet you can still damage him. The training droids are the first of the three Sith Academy bosses. The training droid boss fight consists of four melee droids. Each droid deals 170 to 240 damage from each hit. Some of the training droids' attacks act as throwbacks. These throwbacks are minor stuns, but lead to a bigger problem. Around the room are several electronic pillars. You'll want to destroy these first, him, as the training droids throwbacks knock you into the pillar, causing a long stun. Each pillar has a power-up, but will reset after a given time. You may leave the pillars up to save power-ups if you think it is necessary, but in this battle, it works better to destroy them first. For the first droid, once his health is down to 50%, the second training droid will spawn. Keep working on the first droid regardless. Each training droid spawns three power-ups, so ridding the already damaged training droid only makes the most sense. After the first is destroyed and the second has its health down to 10%, the third will spawn. Once again, when the third droid's health is that reaches 10%, the fourth and final droid will spawn. Completing the boss will reward the player 100 credits. The second boss in the Sith Academy instance is Varad Zag. This boss battle consists of the Sith Master Varad Zag and six Dark Side Illusions. Zag is meditating most of the fight, and when the boss fight starts, an Ahsoka Force Illusion will spawn. The Ahsoka Force Illusion deals 130 to 180 melee damage, and it's fairly easy to burn down. Keep in mind that the, each Force Illusion drops three power-ups. The second Force Illusion is of Anakin Skywalker. Anakin has slightly more health and deals the same amount of damage, 130 to 180. Anakin also has a secondary attack, a kick, which deals 70 to 100 damage and acts as a throwback. After Anakin, the third Force Illusion will spawn, an illusion to Mace Windu. Mace Windu has a bit more HP than Ahsoka or Anakin, but his attacks deal the same damage. Windu also has a Force Push, which deals 130 to 160 damage and acts as an even greater throwback. After Mace is defeated, another Anakin and Ahsoka Force Illusion will spawn at the same time, each the same as before. When both are finally defeated, now is your chance on Varad Zag. Varad Zag has a melee attack and a ranged lightning attack. Varad's melee attack deals 250 to 340 damage. However, his lightning attack deals 140 to 200 damage. Even if you prefer melee, ranged is a wiser pick in this fight. You'll save a lot more health taking lightning attacks versus melee attacks. After Zag's health reaches 33%, he will re-enter meditation mode and spawn one last clone force illusion of Mace Windu. After defeating Mace Windu, you can finish off the remaining health on Zag and be rewarded 100 credits. Now for the final Sith Academy boss, Darth Maul. First of all, on your way to the boss room, you will encounter uncloaked Sith warriors, each capable of wreaking heavy damage of 430 to 560. There are only three of these, and they are easy to defeat, but make sure your health is fully regenerated for this fight. You'll need it. I have waited a long time for revenge. Darth Maul has a total of three attacks. A melee swing, a melee stab, and a force push. The melee swing deals 80 to 120 damage. 
The melee stab deals 180 to 240 damage, and the force push deals 80 to 120 damage, while also acting as a huge throwback. After Maul's health has reached 50%, he will enter a health regeneration mode, as his brother, Savage Opress, spawns. Maul's healing spell usually takes around a minute to fully recuperate him. Savage, on the other hand, also has three attacks, a melee swing, a ground pound, and a force push. His melee swing and force push, with its knockback, also deal 80 to 120 damage just as Maul's does. Savage's ground pound also deals 80 to 120 damage and is a heavy stun. This attack is ultimately unavoidable and will stun your player even if he is out of melee range. Regardless of it, you have defeated Savage or not, Maul will come back into play after his health is fully regenerated. The second time Maul comes in, he will appear seething with a red boiling mist. This indicates that Maul's melee swing and force push both now deal 100 to 140 damage. This mode is referred to as Enrage. Savage will enrage as well once his health reaches 20%. When Maul comes back into play, power-ups will spawn from time to time around the lava pools. Do not attack Maul or Savage near the pools though. They will use force push on you and plant you inside the lava. Remember to circle the lava pools for power-ups once your health begins to get low. From here on, the fight is pretty straightforward. One of the most popular boss fights is the Ice Rancor. This is an open world boss fight and is strictly based on survivability. The Rancor is found circling the Rancor Forest in the top right corner of the map. The Rancor has only one attack, an AoE arm swing which deals 300 damage when swung forward and 300 damage when retracted. This attack will damage anyone standing in front of the Rancor, so unless you are tanking, stand behind the Rancor. The Rancor has a massive amount of health and requires at least 4 players to take him down. One strategy in the Rancor fight is to kite the Rancor by moving backward and damaging it while the Rancor will try to chase after it, the person tanking. If you do choose to kite the Rancor, you will have to make sure another player focuses on wiping droid ads that the player tanking runs into. You don't want more damage and the player power-ups spawned by the droids will definitely be useful. Defeating the Rancor will reward 250 credits to any player who contributes to his defeat. The Ice Rancor respawns every 10 minutes. The Dropship Assault remains one of the hardest boss battles in Balvambar. There are two dropship points, Auric and Besh. You'll know it's a dropship assault if you see a giant ship with two pairs of wings. The dropship is a long boss fight that consists mainly of droid assaults, an AAT, and a hailfire. Six to eight people are recommended for this boss fight. App approaching the dropship, there should already be waves of droids wandering around it. After the existing waves are defeated, new waves will spawn from the dropship. The job of the group is to burn down each incoming wave. This should last for about two minutes before an AAT will spawn. The AAT has two attacks a single hit target attack, and a laser AOE. Unfortunately, we are not able to collect information on the damage of the single target attack, but we do know that a series of shots will defeat a player. The AOE, however, can deal 2500 to 3000 damage to and stun any player in a relatively close distance to the AAT. This is ultimately impossible to tell when the AAT will use this. It's just a matter if you're near the A AOE when it happens or not. Droid waves will continue to spawn even when the AAT has been deployed. After a group of players finally defeat the AAT, more waves of droids will continue to spawn for about two more minutes. Now, a Hailfire will deploy. The Hailfire is an all-around upgrade of the AAT as its single attack, which once again we could not collect specific info on, and its AOE both deal more damage. The Hailfire also has a quicker movement speed and has more HP. The Hailfire's AoE deals around the range of 5,000 to 6,000 damage and will stun players. That's right. The Hailfire AoE has the potential to wipe almost all of a player's remaining health 
depending on how low their health is already. When the Hailfire spawns, you'll want to make sure your health remains above above 6,000 and 5,000, otherwise you'll be wiped quickly. Once again, this AoE is unavoidable if you're in relatively close range. Range damage dealers definitely want to keep their distance in this fight. If your health runs low or you need more force power in this fight, attack the droid waves and pick up power-ups until you're replenished, then return to the fight. Once the Hailfire is destroyed, droid waves will cease and the dropship will close. Back away from the dropship and enjoy the fireworks. Landing ship target confirmed. Fire! Just don't stand too close. It might kill you if you're not careful. All players in the area of the dropship, when it is destroyed, will be rewarded the double credit buff. This buff doubles the credit payout in open world environments. Most players who receive this buff head directly to the Trandoshan camp to credit farm for Captain Deeb. The ease of the boss fight, the doubled credit amount of 250 credits, and the 2 minute respawn allows players to make a lot of credits very quickly. Credit orbs around the Jedi Temple are also doubled by the buff. Collections are perhaps the more enjoyable part of Umbara. Find a blue or red hull projector on the ground? That would be a collection piece. Umbar is scattered with collection pieces, in every area, in all different types of collections. Your current and locked co collection statuses can be viewed from your collection tab in your character page. There are a total of 16 collections in Umbara. Not all are earned through collection pieces, however. Some are earned by completing a feat, defeating a boss, beating a level, etc. Each collection can also be completed multiple times. However, most collection rewards are one time only and reward credits every other time the collection is complete. In this section of the guide, we cover every single collection. Ten out of sixteen Battle of Umbar collections are item collections. These collections include the 5P Shadow Tech Gear, the Sith Holocron, the Umbaran Bunker Furniture, the Ice Rancor Collection, the Darth Maul's lightsaber collection, and the Mill Creep collection. All of the Shadow Tech gear is earned through collection hollows all over Umbara and within mission instances. Each piece requires 8 collection pieces. In all, it will take 40 collection pieces to gain the full Shadow Tech gear. After this collection is complete, the Shadow Tech body armor and rifle will reward 2,000 credits if completed again, and gloves, boots, and helmet will reward 1,000 credits. The next collection is the Sith Holocron. The Sith Holocron is earned through in coll 8 collection pieces scattered over Umbara. It can also be earned from defeating Dark Acolytes near the Sith Academy. Completing this collection will reward a Sith Holocron furniture piece. This collection is also required to be complete in order to access the Sith Academy mission. Completing the Sith Holocron at any other time will reward 250 credits. Next comes Umbaran Furniture. This collection requires completion of Bunker Grek, Krill, and Usk in that order. The reward is one of five random pieces of Umbar and Bunker furniture. This collection can be continually continued to stock up on more furniture. The next collection is for the Ice Rancor, better known as Fog. This collection requires eight pieces from the Ice Rancor boss. You must defeat the Rancor without dying once to have the chance to get a piece. Once the Rancor is defeated, one or more members will receive one of eight pieces needed for the collection. After it is completed, you will be rewarded Fog, a player companion who grants the rare buff Elite Force Up. Completing this collection again will reward 3,000 credits. The next collection is for Darth Maul's lightsaber. This collection requires Darth Maul to be defeated in the Sith Academy six times. This means you will obviously have to play the Sith Ac Academy mission six times. After the six defeats are done, you'll be rewarded Darth Maul's lightsaber hilt and the Sith crystal color. Completing this collection again will reward 3,000 credits. The final of the item collections is the Mill Creep. This collection only requires eight pieces secretly given to eight Umbarans across the map. This only means you will have to run around killing Umbarans until you stumble upon one who has a collection piece. Pieces can also come from finding and killing an Umbaran mill creep that sneaks up on you. The reward is Emily, a reprogrammed mill creep.
player companion that grants the critical damage up buff. Completing this collection again rewards a player 2,000 credits. The final set of collections is of the hardest to complete, the Hero of Umbara collections. Hero of Umbara is a large five-piece collection that requires what is called a Hero of Umbara entry. How do you get an entry? From completing five individual collections based off of each Umbara mission. What's required to get an entry from each? Completion of three challenges from each mission. By completing all three challenges with one mission, you add one entry to Hero of Umbara. This collection requires an entry from each mission. The three challenges in each mission instance are Overpowered, Endurance, and Blue Shadow Virus. In Overpowered, enemies deal twice as much damage as they would before in the level. Your objective here is to take enemies very slowly and precisely, but wipe them out as fast as possible. Ranged Weaponry is the best for these types of challenges. The best buff to use for this challenge is Defense Up. Reducing enemies' critical damage numbers will make a large difference, and will keep you alive longer. A damage buff is unnecessary in this challenge, as the enemies are still easy to kill. The next challenge is Endurance, where enemies have twice as much health as before. Technically, the enemies don't have more health, but your attacks deal half as much damage. Because of the pre-programmed damage reduction, any damage buff does not function in this challenge. The best buff for Endurance would be once again Defense Up. They may not deal a whole lot of damage, but the less damage, the better. The final challenge is Blue Shadow Virus, where 400 of your health is picked off randomly every few seconds. The virus effect does not apply when you are in combat, however. The best buff for this challenge is Health Regenerate Up. The elite version of the, this is possible. Health Regenerate returns 300 of your health every second when not in combat. Elite, however, will regenerate 400 per second which completely eliminates the virus effect. Besides the challenges are the actual difficulty of the mission. Look at our mission instances guide to help. Each mission challenge collection completed rewards 1000 credits and a Hero of Umbara collection entry. This remains the reward handout even after completed. As we said before, the Hero of Umbara collection requires one entry from each challenge collection. Once completed, the Hero of Umbara collection will reward 2,000 credits and a Hero of Umbara player title and a Battle of Umbara house trophy. The title can only be received once, but the trophy and credits can be earned multiple times. Like Rex says, Umbara is a dangerous world. You never know what you might run into. And hopefully by now you have somewhat of a clue what you're going to encounter. Battle of Umbara is now half a year old and has gone undergone several updates, and as Umbara changes, the guide will update as well. I hope this guide has helped you out in some way. Please point out in the comments false or incorrect information, but also tell us if the guide has helped you. Thank you for watching, and may the force be with you.